that he is worthy to be praised. Amen. There is absolutely no other God like our God. Amen. No God like our God. Amen. Amen. Let me pull this up. We've been talking about hearing from God. And this is what you have to understand is that the devil understands as long as you don't hear from God, it doesn't matter uh, how much you love God. Your love for God is irrelevant if you don't know what God wants from you. Come on. Because in order for God to manifest in your life, you have to completely understand what he wants from me. Yes, Lord. Do you get it? Do you get yes, it? Lord. Right? If I don't know what God wants from me, I'll be giving him what I think is good. Yeah. And this is how we force our definition of love on God. Come on, and not understanding what God wants from us. So the more understanding I get, the more I can submit yes, to the will yes. of God. And God is pleased. Yes. One of the biggest problems you have in relationship, if you force your definition of love on me, it's my birthday. It's my time to be celebrated. And now you go home and say, guess what? I cooked my favorite meal. Not yours, but mine. But it's my birthday. Shouldn't you cook what I like? So God is saying, even though you love me, you got to know what I want. You got to give me. If it's about me, it's about me. Listen to me. I'm about to say something else. And don't try to shine when it's God's time. Right. Right. Let me say this. Now, y'all may not think this means anything, but I'm about to say some stuff, and it's the little things you got to look, look at. But the Bible says the small fox that, that destroyed the vine. Mm -hmm. sure. If dinner is about me, you can't cook my favorite dinner and then make your little favorite dinner on the side. Right. It's about me. Right. 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 Come on, not us, me. Right. Right. Well, I, I know you like chicken. I mean myself a little shrimp. But we don't, no, no, no. This is not about you. All efforts should be to make me happy, not us happy. Come on, you see, if you don't allow that to get into your spirit and for you to understand that, you'll always you'll always want happiness as, as long as it includes me. Which means you're not a giver of happiness. Come on now. You're, you're only a receiver, and I'm only to give if I'm gonna receive. Learn how to cook the dinner and say, I don't like nothing that I cook. This is all about you. Amen. I don't like the chicken. I don't like the asparagus. I don't like that. I don't like this. Right. This is all about you. And you're going to sit there. And you're going to eat. Come on now. Uh -huh. What they like. You ain't going to be the cook. But come on now. Right. I know y'all upset. But you got to get that. Come on now. You got to put your belly in this place. Amen. And it can't be your God. Amen. All right? So I, I got to learn what God wants from me. And I'm going to go in this kitchen and give him just what he wants. And uh, and I'm going to be happy about it. Amen. be happy about it. When, it, when, it's, when, it's, when it's time for you to give love, you take them to a restaurant you know they're going to enjoy. Mm -hmm. right. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Bonefish Grill, my wife likes uh, their fish. And uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm cool with it. It's good you know, if, if you want fish. Now, I can take my wife there and we, she's going to be satisfied. Mm -hmm. But I'm not, uh, I'm not really all that in the fish like that. So if it's her time, we go wherever, whatever, whatever makes her happy. That's where we go. You understand that? It don't matter because I'm gonna always find something on the menu that I'm going to, to love because you love it. Oh, come on. Amen. Don't take nobody out and they complain about everything on the menu. Right. 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 I brought you here for your birthday, but I don't like nothing here. Right. I think give me a salad. I, I, I don't even want that. You no, know what I mean, take your stankness, come on down, put it back in the trunk, leave it there. Amen. All right, Amen. because you're you're giving, but now you you can't sit in church. You know about I was about this. I'm not saying it, but what I was about to say was you you trying to give some love, some happiness, and you're having your parade, and then you come piss on somebody else's parade. Right. Come on now, by trying to complain right. about the menu. Right. 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 You knew it wasn't nothing here you like anyway. Order the hamburger, right. order the wings and fries, and said, mm, how good it is. Come on now. Don't be going to the restaurant and complain. Now you're trying to mess up my vibe. Come on now. Because right. how can you really enjoy yourself when I'm totally upset about the menu? Exactly. Amen. So you're going to learn how to give love. Learn how to hear and submit. If you don't know how to do that now, then you can forget about trying to do that spiritually. Mm -hmm. So let's get into some stuff. We talked about meditation. We talked about what we left off last week was prayer and meditation. And prayer is... Is to submit at a prayer is to submit a request or to give thanks to something you you deem as a form of deity, something you say is a high, higher power. So prayer is not just conversating, but it's a form of submission. 
I see you. If I'm praying to you, I see you as my authoritative figure. You rule and reign over my life. Then we got to the word meditation. This definition of the word meditation, I put on here a 2 a.m. 2 a.m. definition of the word meditation. All right. I was up and this is what the spirit of the Lord gave me. Meditation causes whatever you, you are in deep thought about. Meditation calls you, calls it to get into your spirit and cause you to believe it. Amen. When you keep something on your mind long enough, yes. it gets into your spirit and you believe it. Uh -huh. Now you know why the devil always want to keep the negative thing on your mind. Because if you believe it, you're going to act that out. Amen. 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 But if you if you put the positive thing, come if on. you put what God said come in on. it, come on now. And you have to understand something. You can't try to be positive for somebody else. Right. Now, positive thinking has its place. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not the cure-all. Right. You understand that? Right. Because when the Titanic going down, no matter what you're thinking, it's still going down. Mm -hmm. Right? 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 You understand that, right? So it's not about just me thinking, but me also ready to hear. I believe I'm out of this. So now I gotta hear my way of escape. Mm -hmm. Are you listening to me? Yes, you know they had that joke on there. They had that joke on there. They said the boat was sinking. And uh, they said the, the, the man, the, the captain got nervous. The captain said, You there, boy, come. And the little boy, he, you know, he was the porter. He come in and he said, he said, You pray. The guy prayed, he said, Lord, when I came on this boat, it said white only. When I went to the dining room, it said white only. He said, my prayer today is as this boat say, white only. <laughs> no, no, you can't just be praying and believing you getting out. No, you got to be here. You got to hear the way of escape. You understand that? God, if I'm going to get out of this, how? Because I ain't going to just get out because I know you. Amen. Come on now. Are you listening to me? Because even if you're a good swimmer, ocean water is a little different than pool water. Come on now. You know some of y'all, you'll be on at the beach. The, the night, the, the, all the little, little wave come on. Child, uh -huh. you be hollering, screaming, Help me, help me, help me. <laughs> Just stand up. Just stand up. Just stand up. So, so you got to understand, I got to hear God. I got to hear God. All right, so let me let me get to some stuff. I got some good stuff here. I know it's gonna bless you. So if I'm meditating on the right thing, this is now. Now here's the thing: I'm meditating on truth and what God has to say. I can't meditate on the wrong thing and expect to hear from God, because my belief is ushering me to a place that's away from God. If I keep the right thing, that the positive outcome on my mind, come on now, then I, I'm, I'm going to start believing like that. I'm going to start walking like that, talking like that, and then God will come in and speak to me. Meditation is me spending time with God so that God can speak to me, elevate me to a place that I can hear from him. Now, the question is not whether or not God is going to speak. The question is, are you going to obey? Amen. We already understood through St. Mark chapter number four, God will not compound revelation. You got to have ears to hear. Amen. If you have ears to hear, listen, after you have heard, the Bible said God is speaking to you some more, telling you some more stuff to do. Yes, yes, yes. So I cannot get to the place that I am hearing and not obeying and expect God to show up next week with more information. I got to hear, obey, and then I got to also look for God to give me more information so I can grow. If I know what he said yesterday, he ain't got nothing to say to me today. That's why we need the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will bring things back to your remembrance. The Holy Ghost don't bring a bunch of scriptures back to remember. Come on, you understand that? Okay. All right? The Holy Ghost brings back the word you ignored back to your remembrance. Remember the Spirit led you to do this. You need to go back and fix that. Well, oh, that was five years ago, honey. Surely be over that. No, 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 no. Obviously, you ain't over it because you the one sinking. Right. Come on now. So, so you got to get to the place now. See, here's the thing. If God tell you to do something on shore, you jump out on the boat. When the boat starts going down, it's hard to get that thing on the shore fixed. You missed that. Okay. So he tells you, I need you to, I need you to go over there and mend this thing back with your family member. I ain't getting nothing wrong. God ain't got nothing. God don't get in that, that the back and forth. God is a, my mama was a lot like God. When she says something, right. that's it. Amen. Amen. What did I do? How come? Why did he say something? God don't answer that God. Right. And then you go back over there and get that right. 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 
I ain't did nothing. That's all God gonna say. Now, you you go on there and get on the Titanic and start talking about something. I ain't did nothing, and I ain't about to sit up here and, and let them think they right and they wrong as two left boots. I'm getting on the boat. I'm going on to a better life. <laughs> so now you get on the Titanic, and then you say your prayer. Lord, get me out of here. God said, just as soon as you go right over there where I told you, and get it right. You look out, you say, hey, 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 the, the, the land is far. God said, that's a personal problem. <laughs> that's a personal problem. I gave you a word. You didn't want to hear me then. You ain't want to hear me now. Right. See, we want to hear God when we sing it. Right. But we don't want to hear God when we think we got options. I don't really need you. Right. Come on now. Right. Your lack of need for God is the thing that's going to get you in trouble. Amen. You think you're all right without him. People that know God claim to love God, but yet refuse to find a place to worship God. I was reading in, I think it was 2 Samuel chapter number 2. You, now, you, this is what it is, what it is. All right? They ever say I'm throwing off on people, you can say what you want. People with no church home got a problem with God. You can't know God, love God, and don't have a church. Now, I'm not talking about saying that's where I, that I'm a member there. A place where you go to worship. Because God said, I will designate a place for you. Right. I not only will give you a pastor, I'm going to give you a place. Right. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. For you can worship me. So you know what you want to do, but yet you think somehow you got a relationship with God. My question is, who do you think you're talking to if God is not talking to you? Right. Come on. But you have something. Amen. You know, a lot of people think they want my counsel. They think they want my help until they talk to me. Mm -hmm. Until they talk to me. I, I told one young lady, she was um, she having financial problems, and, um, and I told her, I said, you, God will never bless your finances as long as you're doing stupid stuff. You can't tell me you're hungry. Your family member give you $200, mm -hmm. right? I ain't calling call nobody's name. Your family member give you $200, and your dumb self go to Red Lobster. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're supposed to be poor. You're supposed to be poor. You you will remain poor. Then listen to me. Now y'all can say y'all do what you want. All right. It ain't my money. It's your money. Go to somebody's house. Right. Mm -hmm. Some spill. The person that grabbed a bunch of paper towels mm -hmm. to wipe up the spill right. will always be broke. Right. I don't care what they turn to look like. The one that said, hold up, you need to get a towel for that. <laughs> see, when a person got money to shoot out, see, I know you said, that's just pennies. Well, here's the thing. If you waste pennies, I see some of y'all some paper towel grabbers. I, can that. I see it on your face. Well, what's wrong with grabbing a paper towel? See, wait, poverty and waste go hand in hand. Amen, amen. You don't know the size of my house, but I bet I know the size of your bank account. <laughs> Wasting and poverty go hand in hand. And don't think where you live prove you got anything. That's right. right. Amen. Amen. True. You listening to me? Yes, sir. Most people that got plenty of money don't look like it. Yes, sir. The one that look like it is the one you need to be like, mm -hmm. your whole check just went, there. just went to get that Brazilian hair. Your whole check. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Child, you should have went natural until you got caught up on your rent. Now you're going to be in the shelter. <laughs> Come on now. Mm -hmm. I was talking to someone. And she, she was telling me, I should have said she, I'm trying to get to being as, as uh, you know, vague as possible. If, well, I was talking to someone, and they said to me, I was telling them, I said, you got to learn how to budget yourself. You got to learn how to put money together. Because, you know, it, 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 if you don't learn that, you can't never be anything. You can't, if, if people talk about, I'm looking for a house. Well, what you got to say? Nothing. Well, well, that's a problem. That's a problem. I'm believing God. You can believe all you want. At some point, you need to save something. Amen. Right? So, because she, she wants to be somewhere where she's not. All right? You don't, you don't, now, it is what it is. All right? You can't do jail. Come on now. With Walmart polished money. So, when you're doing the jail fingernail polish, you set yourself back. So, she's telling me, she says, she says to me, she says, I'm doing just fine. She said, well, she, she broke, right? She said, I'm doing this fine. She said, my car broke down, and I fixed it myself. That's the only reason I'm broke. 
She said, that's the only reason I'm broke, because my car broke down. Now, did your engine go? Because those are major jobs. When you get a $500 repair and you broke, you ain't doing something right. Come on now. You ain't doing something right. All right? See, here's what you got to understand. If people are not willing to hear instructions, you just got to cut them loose. Now, now, I'm not drifting off. I want you to understand. Don't waste your time with people. Come on now. That have all the characteristics of being poor. Right. They got to be willing to change. Right. Amen. You ought to get tired of it. No, no, come on now. I don't care if it hurts your feelings. After you said that, now if any tennis hearing this, this ain't for you. <laughs> my tennis hearing this, oh, come on now. This only for the people in the in house. Anybody, you know, that I'm telling me, hey, I got some good I got one tennis straight from heaven, I ain't lying. Straight from heaven. And uh, you you sit down and calculate how much you paid in rent over the past two years. You got all the wrong with you. You ought to sit there and be ready to cuss yourself out. So I'll be jumping around. And you look at the landlord, he looking at you grinning. <laughs> you listen to me. You gotta wanna improve. Improvement comes through instructions. <clears throat> so to hear God is to hear instructions that will produce a better result than where I'm at. There is no hearing God and you wind up on the same level. The devil is a liar. He brings you to another level. That's true. When you see anything in my life that's a success, you know I heard God. I ain't, no, 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 this ain't nobody's school. Come on now. When you see the success on my children, my wealth is not in materialism. My wealth can be seen in my children. Do you hear me? So when you see Randy make honor roll in one of the top schools in the United States of America, and there's a major reason why they never compare our all-black school to Yale and Harvard. There is a reason. Yes. Amen. There is a reason. Now, <clears throat> listen to me. Listen to me. When you see Brandy's success as an honor roll student in Spelman, you see my wealth. Because you see where I heard God and obeyed God concerning my children. Amen. Anybody can buy a car. Amen. Anybody can buy a house. Anybody can buy some clothes. Anybody can buy. No, no, that's just the truth. But what distinguishes me from the others is the hand of God on my life. Yes. When you see success, you see, you see where I've heard God and obeyed God. Amen. When you start hearing God and obeying God, I don't care what area in life you hear and obey, you're going to see success. Amen. Amen. Do you hear me? Amen. You got to get to the place that as God speaks, I'm excited that he even spoke to me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm ready and, and on fire to obey him. Yes, sir. See, my love is just the honor that he spoke to me. Mm. When the rewards come, come on now, the rewards don't encourage me. I just receive them. Amen. Now, no, 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 everybody ain't there. All right? Rewards don't motivate me to obey God. Yes, I love him so much, just knowing he chose me to talk to Amen. is good enough. Amen. When the rewards come, I just thank you, Lord. Thank you. I, I receive. I believe I receive. And I'm telling you, boy, I'm telling you, God does some stuff. God do some things in your life sometimes where you just know it's him. Stuff you ain't even expect, stuff you ain't work for. True. True. Stuff you ain't work for. You just, I'm, you know, I'm happy. Oh, all you've been doing for me, I'm going to give you some. Yes. You can't serve God and God don't bless you. Come on. Yes. You can't, God can't tell you to do something for him and you don't, you don't get rewarded for obeying him. It just don't work like that. Yes. Right, let me get to some stuff here. And I got some stuff here. And, and, and uh, let me see. Whew. Let, let's go to Luke 6. I'm going to talk about anxiety because that's something you can't have, but I ain't going to talk about it now. I want to get to this new stuff, this stuff I, I just got. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. Let me do this. Do this. Go to Proverbs 2. 2 and 1. Let's go there. Because you have to understand just reading God's word is not enough. Just going to a church that teach the Bible is not enough. Amen. Are y'all listening to me? Yes, all right? So I, I, if that's not enough, because if all you do is can read and comprehend, you know, that's reading. 
to, to, to be able to call out the words, right, and comprehend, to understand what they're saying. If that's all it took, all of us, can, anybody can claim they heard from God. Every theologian. So, so here's what you need to understand. I need you to see that God wants to show you people that gets to hear from him dig deeper than just his word. Spending time with that thing. When you hear a word, this is how you know you feel with the Holy Ghost. Not the jumping and the shouting. Y'all hear me? The jumping and the shouting and the flipping and all that, that don't prove nothing about the Holy Ghost. Amen. All right? You know how you know you get the Holy Ghost. When you get a word, you wrestle with that thing to get it in you. To get that word to manifest in my life. All right? Here, my son, yeah, right there, verse 1. My son, if thou wilt receive my words and hide my commandments with thee, come on, so that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom and apply thy heart to understanding. This is about to get good now. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge, and lifts up thy voice for understanding. Come on. If thou seekest her as silver, talking about wisdom, and search for her, talking about wisdom, as for hidden treasure. Now here's the thing. Wisdom and understanding is essential. All right? Now, I got to get hungry for it, and I got to chase after it. You ain't, there is nothing hidden about something that's just sitting on top. Come on now. Right on the surface. When something is hidden, it requires some thinking and some searching to make it come to pass. Right. You know, they say when the, when the pirates would hide something, they, they, you had, you, it just, the map didn't just say, you know, make a left, make a right, and it's right here. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? They'd be talking about something right under the, right under the, the live tree with no leaves and, and all this other hidden cold stuff. And you'd be looking around. Now you're trying to, now you're trying to decipher which tree is alive but don't have no leaf? Because you start looking at every tree with no leaf. You dig it looking for something under a dead tree. So, and so, so, so now, when I'm searching for something in God's word, it's hidden. I got to dig for it. I got to search for it. I got to meditate for it. I got to think about this thing. It's not easily uh, uh, obtained. If, uh, listen, if it was easily obtained, he wouldn't be talking about all this hiding and seeking. And such, come on, let's go to the next one, verse number five. I'm going to show you something here. Then shall thou understand the fear of the Lord. Now go back, go, go back to verse number three. And I'm going to read right through. Yea, if thou criest out the knowledge, and lift up thy voice for understanding, come on, if thou seekest her as silver, and searchest for her as, as for hidden treasure, verse number five, then, which means if I'm not searching, seeking, Asking, lifting up my voice. I am never going to get the understanding on how to reverence God. Amen. The fear of the Lord is not the shape. No, this is in awe of Him, in reverence of Him. All right? It's coming before royalty. If, you don't, if you're not hungry to know what God wants from you, you'll never understand how to please Him. Amen. If you're not hungry to get what God has for you, in the hidden things of his word, you'll never be able to satisfy him. Yeah. Then shall thou understand the reverence of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. Go ahead to verse number six. If all I had to do was learn how to read to get the knowledge of God, then this verse here is irrelevant. All this searching, looking for hidden things, and all that other stuff. Mm-mm. 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 We, I was, if we get time, go to Mark number four, where we see when God started talking about, about, about the people, he started talking about the, and the source of the word and all that. He started talking about how, how the <clears throat> things, of, things of the Bible is hidden. And, and, now, and this is telling us we got to be hungry for it. For the Lord giveth wisdom. What? Well, what about if I quote a bunch of scriptures? The Lord giveth wisdom. Yes. And out of his mouth <coughs> cometh knowledge. And understand it. Now, people say, well, you know, I got the word and that's enough. Now, if that's all it took, everybody, let listen, then we don't have to ask for knowledge. If, all, if, we, if it's just the word, every scripture telling me to ask for it, it don't, it, why are you writing that? Why do I have to ask if, you, if it's just the word? You don't want to learn how to live like someone under the law. 
Because the law killeth. Yes. <clears throat> it's the letter that gives life. Yes. Are you listening? Yes. All right. For the Lord giveth wisdom, out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. Come on. He layeth up sound wisdom for the right. Now, when you lay up something, that means you're storing it up. Then you know that that's what they what you know, call preserves and different things like that. Or you put things in the freezer, put them laying it up for later. Well, God said, I got wisdom that I got just laid up for the people that's willing to solve problems in the earth like I would. The word righteous there is not just accepting Christ. The word righteous there to be right standing with God, which means I find out how God wants this problem solved, and that's how I solve the problem in the earth. God said, I got laid up wisdom for people that's hungry to solve a problem in their marriage just like me. Yes. Are y'all listening to me? Yes. Yes, sir. Right? He laid up sound wisdom for the righteous. He is a buckler to them that walk upright. Come on. He keepeth the path of judgment and preserveth the way of his saints. Last verse, verse number nine. Then shalt thou understand righteousness and judgment and equity, yea, every good path. See, that's something in you that got to be hungry for more. Jesus was teaching. He taught just the surface. Go to Mark chapter number four. Oh, let me see. Let me, let me, let me see what verse. Go to Mark chapter number four. And uh, these people here are hungry. Hungry for the word. And uh, Jesus starts talking to them. Okay, look at this. Uh, Mark chapter number four. Verse number 10. Four and 10. You got to get like this. Jesus is teaching. Is that greater teacher that ever lived, walked here than Jesus? I mean, I know some of y'all pretty good. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, Brother Raheem ready to take off this morning here. <laughs> yeah, you ready all already. You ready. He was about to touch his ear, you know what I'm saying? Let me take, let me cut this mic off. <laughs> so, so I know y'all pretty good, but there's none greater than Jesus, right? Yes. Jesus got finished teaching. Look what happened, verse number 10. And when he was alone, they, I read up here. And when he was alone, they that were about him with, with the twelve asked of him the parable. Come on, verse number 11. And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Jesus taught. They came back and said, Listen, we heard what you taught. But we, we need full understanding. I want to walk this thing out. Now, a whole bunch of people heard it, and they got the scriptures. We've been being good for our night, child. Joy coming in the morning. Woo! Child, they were going their way to the car. Come on now, all right now. More is coming, child. Amen. Praise the Lord. But a few said, listen here, this is here weeping and this night stuff and morning stuff. I just don't, you got to go a little bit deeper. Because I've been in this mess for seven days. So obviously you ain't talking about day and night. Something that I'm missing something. Right, right. And Jesus said, for you is to know the mysteries. See, when you get hungry to know, the, the, the hidden treasures is open up to you. But unto them that are without, all these things are done in parables. Now, Jesus said, there are some people that know, know scripture, know, know the Bible, but they don't have the mysteries on how to get it to manifest. Don't be somebody that just knows the Bible and know how to get it to manifest. Y'all look like I'm talking about your auntie. So, let, let, let's get to some more stuff here. So, 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 if I'm going to grow, I got to get to the place that I'm willing to hear and obey God. To the point that I'm hungry for what he wants. I know the word, but what do you want from me? See, once your spirit comes alive, you know when something ain't right. Yes, sir. You know, the old folks, like my grandmother, they didn't, they didn't call it the Holy Ghost. Mm. Mm -mm. Something ain't right here. What are you talking about? Something ain't right here. There's some of the old folk will say, it's a dead cat in the line. Something ain't right. You know, you know somebody tell a whole story? And, and they're all, uh-huh, shut up. Mm. 
mm, mm. And then after they finish, they said, mm. There's a lot missing from there. <laughs> a lot missing from that story. Yeah. 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 Just pick up on lies and uh, come on now. Yeah. Some of you all, your life would be much better if you had this to grandma. Uh, amen. Your grandma said, mm-mm. Mm-mm, bring, bring that. Ah! Bring that one back to the right. Grandma, why not? You're my friend. Mm-mm. 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 They just know something ain't right. Mm-hmm. See, that's how you need to be with God's word. You just know I ain't got it all. Right. Something I gotta get something more. It's yeah. something more. And you keep reading it. You gotta get hungry for it. To hear God is more than just reading the Bible. It's to be hunger for deeper. Right. The deep calling to the deep. See, some people don't need to do is be able to quote the scripture. But the deep calling to the deep. You're called to go a little bit higher than average. That's why you can't settle with it. Settle for reaping what men do for a night, but joy come in the morning. Amen. And people looking at their watch. You know something ain't right. This ain't the morning. This ain't the morning. This ain't the morning they talking about. This ain't the morning they talking about. What are you talking about? Reaping men do for a night. And all of a sudden, you just stay with that thing. And you stay with that thing. You stay with that thing. And all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit said, well, night represent darkness. The devil gonna keep riding you, but he only gonna ride you until Jesus comes. Amen. He is the bright and morning star. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, so when I get revelation, it's not about time; it's about my place in the kingdom. Amen. So weeping may endure for a night. Weeping will endure as long as I remain in the custody of the devil. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But joy gonna come. When I start, come on, step out into the righteousness of God. So weeping may go for a night, joy come in the morning. Where is the morning? All right? The morning is when I meet Jesus, when I hear from the Lord, when I hear from heaven, that night gives me my morning. If you hear from God, it's going to transition your night to your morning, your ashes to beauty. So, I, I got to get to the place that I'm, I'm digging. I'm hungry for deeper. I'm hungry for more. Go to Philippians 4 and 6. While I'm waiting, if I'm going to hear God, if I'm going to hear God, I can't get anxious. Anxiety will make you do more than what you should. When it's time to be still and allow God, come on now, to work on your behalf. You got to be able to be still. You can't be telling God, hurry up. Yes. Stop patting your foot, popping your fingers, and all, you know, what stuff you do when you get anxious. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Come on now. You know, you're 21, you tell God what kind of man you want, yeah. and you hit 30, and God act like he, he deaf. He <laughs> hey, all right now. All right now, all right now. I'm about to help you out. Come here. Come on, what's your name? <laughs> I ain't no Christian, don't matter. You got a job, I like your car and your eyes. That's cool. Come here. He said, no, I don't want to. You come, you come and you come with me. <laughs> and you gonna act like you happy you found me. He said, I didn't find you, you came in. Take you in this church. You better act like you know you know better. Y'all don't care nothing. It don't matter. He's drunk. How? It don't matter. I've been, I've been lonely long, so long, child. I don't smell no liquor. Come here. Don't worry, you're alone with me. Just, just, just shut up. Come here. And don't talk to nobody. And after the service, you go right to the car. You hear me? And don't start it up. Just sit there. Just sit right there. Why the man that that was in? He hit me. <laughs> hey brother, we back here. I can't talk. <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble. You understand? No, you 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 start messing up. You start messing up. You start telling God what you want, how much, how bad you want it. Start looking at these houses and cars, and you start getting caught up. You start wanting it so bad. Next thing you know, you'll start stealing for it. One for you, one for me. <laughs> two for you, one, two for me. Mm-hmm. Tell me what 
three for you. One, two, three for me. <laughs> See, let me tell you something. When you, when you start getting anxious, you start getting evil. Because you start thinking corrupt. Can I tell you something? There's a lot of people in more debt than they should be in because they're anxious. That's true. When my wife and I moved into our first house, I, I, I bought my house, my first house, I was 19 years old. And uh, we wasn't living in there. We wasn't married. When, when I bought that house. Neither were we living in it. Right? That don't mean nothing. I'm just, you know, my members admit that I don't want you to think, oh, he's trying to, no, no, you do what you do. I'm trying to do what I do. He wasn't living in it. We bought the house. I bought it March 27, March 27, 1992. I bought my house. I moved in that house with uh, a TV and some pots. Yes. That's what we moved in there. Slept on the floor. About a year later, we got us a bedroom set and uh, a kitchen set, a glass table. Whole year later. You don't know how good a bed feels. You slept on the floor. That's right. We, we, we stayed there during the week because we both worked in, in New York and uh, my wife was in Brooklyn House in Manhattan. And, um, and we stayed at my mom's house during the week and we'd come home on the weekends. And, um, and man, man, that bed felt so good. It wasn't about a twin bed, but it was bending in that floor. Good God all day. Now, 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 now you, you may say, well, maybe that wasn't God. Maybe you moved too fast. But, but, but I wasn't paying rent. It was my house. It, now, now I, could, I could try to get that house and, and, and get a car and try to act people like I don't arrive. And, and then you're going to mess up. You get in the debt. You don't need to get debt to prove that nobody. When people, when people came over to my house, you knew where you was going to sit. Right. On the cotton picking floor. <laughs> Come on. I had no problem with that. I had no problem with that. You ain't going to make fun of me. You, you listen in. Because, you know, I already had a, a little crazy attitude anyway. Oh, you, you, oh, you too? Just get out of me. <laughs> now, we did have, I think we, I don't know if we had a couple of folding chairs. I don't know. We might have had a couple of chairs. You know, for the high-end people. You know what I mean? <laughs> They go, Obama stop by. We pull out the, the folder chair, the amount of metal chair. You know what I mean? Yeah, just have a seat there, Mr. Yes. President. But for the rest of y'all, on the floor. Listen, sometimes you, you get so anxious to impress people. Do you know the number one drive of debt is because you care what people think? Right. That's true. That's the number one drive of debt. If ain't nothing wrong with your car and it's paid for, you should be making payments, come on now, before you get the car. Right. Why you, why you got to wait for the car to break down for you? Come on now. <clears throat> Most people don't know proper money management because their mind is all messed up with impressing people. You don't, you don't have to get a car to impress people. Get a car you know you, you good with. <clears throat> now, I had, I, my wife and I, we had a, a Mercedes. At that time, it was the S500, right? And from the Mercedes, I always wanted the Mini Cooper. And I wanted the stick shift. It was going to be my toy. After I drive that car for about 30 minutes, it no longer was my favorite toy. Man, that thing messed with your back. That thing, man, I'm telling you, what? Don't get stuck in traffic with a stick shift. Man, that car, was, man, I was so happy when that lease was up. <laughs> Jesus. Cause no, no, that is what it is. Don't you, don't get stupid. I, the, all cars don't ride the same. All cars don't have the same yes. comfortability. Yes. All right, that's a lie. Somebody tell you that they lying. They, they lying. That many cool. I knew then that I couldn't go back. Mm -hmm. I might have to work two jobs, <laughs> but I can't go back. I ain't lying. I knew I couldn't go back. When you go from a car where the headrest will come from the back and move up to your head. To that thing that's just straight, you can come back here if you want to. The hairdresser said, you, if you want, you want to lay on me, you can come back here. <laughs> and you got jackets and pillows and stuff behind your neck because you're trying to lay right and all that stuff. I can't go back. I won't go back. <laughs> Jesus, I can't go back. You know, you sit in the chair so long, it's nice to push that button 
and put that air in the chair and make it, it come on now. The older you get, the more gadgets you need. I'm talking, I ain't lying. I ain't lying. I ain't lying. Y'all sit there and make fun of me all you want. Yesterday, I was sitting there outside with my toes. And uh, I did about a, about a pool. We, it ain't finished. We ain't going to have no money. I'm probably going to take up another offer after this. So I go to, 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 to jump. They got this big ditch all the way around the pool where the pipes is running, right? And uh, so I went to go jump in the pool. My foot got caught in one of the, the <laughs> gate things. I fell. I had a glass in my hand. Bam! Oh my, I've never felt like this. That, that concrete hall. I don't know if y'all know that. that. That concrete, and it's called gunite. It's not really concrete, it's called gunite. Uh -huh. And that stuff get hard. Like, I mean, hard, hard. Right, right, right. Yeah, harder than hard. Mm -hmm. I got up, well, I'm telling you, I, my arm was hurting, but I pulled something in, in my, like my inner thigh up in my stomach. <laughs> and I, I'm telling you, I'm walking around, I'm telling, I couldn't get up, I couldn't hardly move. I told my wife, I said, I'm bigger my mind today. I'm not getting old. I changed my mind. Because getting old ain't no fun. Right, right. Man, was the time I'd have hit that ground, now I wouldn't even broke the glass. I said, BAM! Got up. Make sure nobody saw me. Step on. Well, you can't do that now, huh? Well, you hit that ground, you got to pray your way back up. I'm telling you now, you said that. These young people laughing, but they're going to hit that ground one day. All old people fall sometimes. I ain't but 46 and I hit that ground. I can tell that I ain't, I wasn't 20 no more. <laughs> I can tell I wasn't 20. And I made up my mind, I ain't getting old. The devil is alive. Amen. 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 I ain't getting old. Come on now. Amen. I ain't about to get in them cars. Come on now. They, they can't get you comfortable. Right. Cause them cars will mess you up. Yes, you, you get up, your back be cracking and all that stuff. That ain't good. When you can hear your bones and stuff, that ain't good. That's not hell. Y'all be acting like you act like you act like you in shape. No, that's bad. There's nothing good about hearing your bones. The first five steps you hear it every <laughs> Ain't nothing healthy about that. Ain't nothing healthy about that. Alright? Listen to me. You you see you see what somebody else got, you want it. That's what banks get rich at. That's what banks get rich at. Come on now. Get your car, you, you, you know it's right for you. Now, don't, don't, don't get it twisted now. If I was on mini coup level, that's where I'm going to stay. Right, right, right. <clears throat> that's where I'm going to stay. But, but when, I, when I'm ready to come up out of there, God, whatever I need to do to stay here, just tell me. Yes, sir. Going back, going back, don't, ain't got nothing to do with people. My back can't go back. That's right, that's right. <laughs> my legs, my neck, none of that can go back, dear Lord. So I need to stay faithful unto death. Amen. I need to go from glory to glory. Alright? If, if the banks don't get you wanting what your neighbor got, what your friends got, what would, if they if they ever get you to the place that you don't that you don't want that, they going out of business. Why are you gonna write a check and you ain't got no money in the bank account? <laughs> banks, banks get rich. Because you spending money you ain't got. That's true. <clears throat> you get anxious for something. You, it's all right to look and understand you ain't getting it. Right. Tell myself, I look just to dream. Sometimes you need to stop dreaming and get you in trouble. That's true. You're dreaming the wrong thing. You wake up, you be wanting it. You say, I'm, I'm, I believe God. No, you're not believing God. That's anxiety. Mm -hmm. Sit still and wait on God. He can give you a plan. Because the blessings of the Lord make it rich and add no sorrow. You ain't got to screen your calls like that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Nicole, that's you. <laughs> no, this is Nicole Bryant. I'm sure it is. No, it's not. <laughs> when my mama died, she had owed some debt, and somehow they got my number. And they said, um, may we speak to Betsy Randolph? I said, um, she's, she's no longer with us. And he said, um, she is with us. Hello? So he is, she is with us. I spoke to her last week. And, and then they're going on and on because they used to people playing them games. I said, ma'am, if you talk to my, wife, my mom last week, not only will I pay you 
everything that's old. I'll give you a bonus, personally. Who is this I'm talking to? It ain't Betsy, because you're only about to harass me. It ain't Betsy. Y'all be sitting there acting like y'all somebody else, not them people. When they, when they get people telling the truth, they think they're talking to somebody like you. <laughs> Stay in your lane. Don't get anxious. Wait for God. When it comes to receiving things in the earth, wait to hear from God. Amen. Never be anxious. Now, you got to grow in your level. Now, th there's a certain levels <clears throat> when it comes to real, real estate. Some of you need to get your credit right. You need to save your money. And you need to make some things move. Right. Then there's another level where you don't consult the banks on going to the other level. Now, if, now, if you can't even get a mortgage, I'm going to tell you, it's going to take some time and some work for you to get the faith and, and, the, and the submission to go from trying to get a mortgage to paying cash for a house. Okay. You hear me? I'm just telling you the truth. I'm not trying to, you know, uh, take on your parade. Right. But if you want to take that faith walk, come on. You get to the place that you start hearing God that I'm not looking for a mortgage. I'm looking for the blessings of the Lord that make rich and add no sorrow. Yeah, Debt is a sorrow. Do you know that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead and owe enough people. They start calling you and, and talking crazy and retarded. And listen to me. Just because you got enough money to pay the debt don't make that debt all right. So I got to hear God. Don't get anxious. Start borrowing money because I can't wait on God. Amen. Can't get anxious picking up somebody claiming they're my wife and my, my husband because I ain't willing to wait on God. Amen. Are you listening? Yes, sir. Can, can, I, can I go down that boulevard a little bit with this husband thing? Since you're mad at me already. <laughs> since you can't get your house and your car. If, you, if you're really going to go out and get your own man, you can't talk to God about what to do with it. Who told you to get it? Mm. You ignored me when I told you, wait, I got somebody for you. Come on, man. You ignored my saying. You ignored you, you were so hot to try. Mm -hmm. You said, God, you take it too long. You don't, you don't, you're obviously missing it. Because I done passed three or four good ones. Mm -hmm. You obviously didn't see it. Because I got a better eye than you. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna help you out. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna help you out. And God said, well, well if you, if you're going to help me. It don't make no sense for me to get in your way then. Amen. Amen. And all of a sudden, you, you go get some crazy person. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, a friend, a friend, he's a friend. A friend of mine got married. His pastor told him, just don't be in a rush. He said, just take some time. Get to know each other. Just slow down. Slow down. Wait, I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. I, I'm not going to get mad. <laughs> slow down. No, no. No slow down. No slow down. Me go faster. Me go faster. <laughs> so he's married about two years. He said, I hear my pastor's voice ringing out of my spirit. Slow down. Get to know each other. Slow down. Get to know each other. To now, the only reason he's married because he don't want to be embarrassed. Wow. Man, I'm telling you. Yeah, listen to me. You can't, you can't allow what you want to hurry God up. Amen. You be want what somebody else got so bad not knowing what it costs. Sorry. And sometimes it's not. You may have the right one, but because you ain't mature enough. That's true. Come on now. Good marriages cost. Yes. And you don't have what it takes. Your bank account of submission is at all times zero. So when you come in, you willing to blow the good man you got. Cause can I tell say that you take any kind of weight home? Every good man ain't perfect. True. Did you hear me? But he will love God. Amen. Come on. Amen. He said, well, he, he, he may be coming up short on the last part. You may not know who God is, but when you look in his green eyes, yeah. okay, stupid. <laughs> yeah. when, you, when, you, when, you, when you get in your, when you start getting into arguments, and then you wake up like, did he hit me? <laughs> what time is it? <laughs> <laughs> yes. And he said, he, he must have hit me. <laughs> And then he's got something the eyes ain't as green as it was. Get to the 
place that I'm going to trust God. Yes. Trusting God removes anxiety. Y'all there, Philippians, read this and I'm, I'm done. For today. Be careful for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanks and something to give. Did y'all catch that? Yes, sir. Yes. Thanksgiving is about giving. Come yes, on, sir. Yes, I was uh, in conversation with this uh, native young lady, and do you know the native people celebrate Thanksgiving totally different? It's a time of grieving, mourning. Because it was a time that the white man came, lied, manipulated, raped, killed, slaughtered. It, it was the, one of the worst times of their life. Can you imagine walking through a house that you own and the only place you're allowed to be is in a closet somewhere in the basement? Can you imagine that? You know, it's nothing but a trick. That land was given to them by God. You read that in the Bible. God broke up the language, right? And then he separated them, put them in different places over the world. So when somebody just pop up somewhere, it wasn't that they found it. God put them there. Amen. 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 All right? Now, I'm going to say this. You take it any kind of way you want. Here, all the other countries talk about how wealthy America is, how rich America is. You driving a million-dollar car don't mean more than how you get a million dollars to buy it. Amen. Amen. How did America get this rich? Right. If you, if you know anything about your history, you know America got rich from cops. Free labor that produced the cotton they sold all over the world was the foundation of the wealth of this country. <laughs> Don't tell me you go back nowhere. Your wealth is because of my ancestors. That's right. Do you hear me? Yes. So the native girl was saying it's totally different, and she said um, uh, they actually they, they migrate different places, and they meet like 4 a.m. in the morning. They pray. And all this other stuff, and uh, and uh, and and they, uh, you know, reminisce, you know, talk, think about how they allow the enemy to bewitch them, and uh, so Thanksgiving means something different. They came, they were thankful that we invited them, and they gave us gifts, but it was all a setup, mm. right? I am, I am off from what I'm talking about. But since I'm there, I'm going to keep, I'm going to stay with the little black history moment. Hollywood tried to make you think native people were a bunch of witches and crazy people. And Hollywood told you native people would pray to every different type of God. The God of the clouds. The God of the tree. The God of the water. The God. The, the, and, 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 and no, they would say uh, the cloud, uh, God cloud, and the God of see, and what they were simply saying was the God who created the clouds, the God who created the sea, Come on, yeah. man, the man. God Come who on. created the tree. Yes, see, Hollywood made us think they have God for everything, right. but Hollywood is a lie. Mm -hmm. Are y'all listening to me? Listen. Mm -hmm. So they were sitting, they were saying, the God who made this ocean, we need fish. Mm -hmm. Are y'all listening to me? Right. The God who made the clouds. We need water. Amen. The God who made the trees, we need wood. We need shade. We need see, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Because if, if you if you don't understand how America got where they at, you you'll be celebrating in something, come on now, that's all evil from its root. Now you got church people talking about I don't celebrate Halloween. Your stupid self need to understand why you how you need to understand how you need to celebrate Thanksgiving and other holidays. Sitting up there with a big old pilgrim sitting up on in, in your house, you're stupid. <laughs> you just as dumb as, as dumb dumb can be. <laughs> no, because they would come and they would give them give them gifts, showing how thankful they are, and it was a setup. It was a, so, so we don't we don't we don't celebrate the pilgrims. And I had to let her know. My Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday because I'm thankful for all what God done for me. Amen. 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 That's why I celebrate. It's more about being thankful unto God. Yes. I'm not thankful that I'm in America. 
I'm not thankful of America's independence. I'm not thankful of none of that. That's not part of my celebration. You understand that? All right? Oh, Black History Moment, I did drift. You know, it's all right, though. I'm the pastor. I get it. I drift all the time, so y'all just can roll with it. <clears throat> with prayer and supplication, with thanks, and something to give, let your request be made known unto God. Once I have a request, I need to sit still until I hear God. I cannot allow anxiety to allow me to make a move. You ain't got to worry about being rich. You ain't got to worry about that. Because the more God can trust you, the more he'll give you. Do you hear me? You know, I, I, let me tell you something. This is me. I know God called me to live a certain level financially. I wouldn't even try to define it for you. You get upset with me. I know this is the will of God for my life. Well, I don't have to chase after that. I just got to be submitted to, what it, to the word of God right now. What is God telling me? You know, if I looked at this church, now I'm not trying to hurt nobody's feelings, I'm not talking about y'all, I love y'all, don't be acting stupid. If I looked at this church, the size of this church, and then tried to compare it to how I teach and preach, to the number of people that want to be a part of my, my wife and our life, this is the God's honest truth. I would say, man, I'm going to go put my, my resume in at Mount Watermelon Baptist Church. Why? Because if I get caught up in the wrong thing, I get I mess up what God's telling me to do. Right. Sit right here, seven six zero three River Road. I'll tell you when you need to go somewhere. Okay. You listen. But if you get caught up in people right. and want the large number, don't nobody want to preach the chair. I don't get what no preacher tell you. No preacher want to preach the chairs, and they don't want to preach the dead people. Right. Okay. They don't. That's just the truth. But it don't matter who you're preaching to or how many you're preaching to. What matters is, are you preaching to who and what God told you? That's, all, that's the difference in all the world. So if I get mixed up and get caught up and want to preach to a lot of people, I'm going to mess up. The devil will get you chasing after something that's not the will of God, but it has a better perception of God. You, you Listen to me. You didn't marry the wrong one. I don't know where that, that garbage come from. Mm -hmm. You got Christians talking about uh, you, you got to find your soul mate. Where did they get that garbage from? Mm -hmm. Where did they get that from? No, you know, don't, don't be thinking this about any, 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 any. No, no, no. You ain't going to get lucky and find your soul mate. You got to die. Right. Now, granted, I ain't not, there might be somebody out there, I ain't knocking it, that met each other, love at first sight, and never once had a disagreement. Mm -hmm. And they married 50 years. They could be out there. They could be. They probably are, ah, but they could be. <laughs> no, because two becoming one is a process. Ooh, you got to learn this thing. It ain't about, I don't know if I married the right one. Well, what one one day would you think you should have married? Because ain't no, no one out there is going to just be an <clears throat> automatic thing. <clears throat> you have to work. You have to forgive. You have to be patient. So you get to the place that I hear God in my marriage. It, it don't matter who you are. I just got to obey God. I don't give up on this thing. I need to hear God. Amen. Hearing God comes with a price most of us have never paid before. That's why we can't walk into a realm we've never been before in our marriage because there's a price to pay. We, listen here. Most of us have already declared, I ain't going to pay. Right. <clears throat> I know this sound weird, but I tell women all the time, don't go around talking about what you will forgive and what you won't. I don't care what nobody say, I ain't, I, he cheated on me. That's it. It's a wrap. I'm never going to forgive him. I'm never going to. No, no, no. Calm down. Because that's the natural uh, instinct. That's the natural, that natural, you know, you cheat, I leave. Mm -hmm. Talk about marriages now. They talk about been dating the whole time, but my marriage is. All right? <clears throat> if you're going to make those declarations, you could be de declaring, I will not have a marriage that is going to bring me ultimate joy. Right. You cannot set yourself. Now, I'm not saying it's okay for them to cheat. That's not what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. What I am saying is, don't set yourself up with what you will forgive and what you won't. There's a whole lot of 
marriages that had to forgive stuff you claim that you never would. Mm. Woman called me on my name. That's it. It's a wrap. That's what it likes. Calm down. Calm down. Cause they come on down. Cause they they'll, they'll, they'll step out of pocket on you. Mm. <laughs> they'll step out of pocket on you. Say something that'll really make you want to go to jail. You mm. get. <laughs> Listen, they say something to you and say, yeah, yeah, police. Right. Yeah, I'm telling you, it's me. <laughs> no, you ain't got to no, look. No, you ain't got to no, be right here. I'm going to kill my wife. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs> no, they'll say something that make you think crazy. They, they'll say some stuff make you take two steps toward them. <laughs> and if God don't intervene, they're going to be choked. The hell will be choked out of them. <laughs> it's you I love. It's the devil I'm trying to get out. <laughs> I'm, trying, I'm trying to get the devil out of here. <clears throat> you get to the place, you start hearing God, you start paying a price. Yes. When you hear God, you're not going to hear something that's easy. That stuff you be hearing, God said, I'm going to fix it. That wasn't God. No, 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 no. That wasn't God. God is the one that said, Go and say you're sorry, and you ain't getting nothing. Oh, my Lord, Jesus. God is the one that's saying, just sit there and be quiet. Mm -hmm. They got it all wrong. I know that. You know that. But they don't. Come on. Right. Right. So no matter what you say, you ain't going to do nothing but make matters work. Mm -hmm. You just sit here and be quiet. Mm -hmm. Just sit there. Sit there. I ain't going to sit here and look dumb. Uh -huh. you, you're already dumb. Uh -huh. <laughs> so we can deal with the looks. Just smile. Don't, don't come to God like he needs your help. You got to come to God as if, God, whatever you tell me to do, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. For, listen to me. Yeah. If you want a better life, it's going to cost you. I'm not talking about money now. True. Joy, peace, happiness. <clears throat> yes. Trying to raise your children like somebody else raised their children in another part of the world, you ain't going to have nothing worth, worth, worth uh, bringing home for Thanksgiving. There's some parts in Africa, they're just as strict today as they were 100 years ago. There's some parts in Africa, you know, I had said something. Um, we, we talk to people all over the world. And um, this lady asked me, she said, uh, in America, can the wives talk back? <laughs> honey, honey, hush. You better stay where you at. You don't need to visit here. Right. She said, "Do they get? Are they allowed to talk? Are they allowed to talk back?" Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Listen to me. You, if you try to treat your wife like they do in Nigeria, Kenya, but they go out there hurt you. Mm -hmm. Now you might physically can whoop them, uh -huh. but when they sneak you, uh -huh. child, it's hard to get your balance. It's hard to get your balance. I'm telling you, when that skillet hit the back of your head, boy, you just, you, man, you just stay dizzy. <laughs> One, you shocked, you hurting, you bleeding, and she crying and talking to you, telling you all she ever wanted to do was love you. Yeah, that's going to be a whooping you're going to love you. I'm telling you, boy, when they start talking about how much they love you and whoop you in the same time, boy, that's going to hurt a while. I'm going to tell you that. That's going to hurt for a few days. You might as well just accept it. You got to get to the place I know it's going to cost me. A good life going to cost me, and I'm willing to pay. You just got to make up your mind. I'm willing to pay. You ain't getting rid of the wife you got. You're going to keep her. Amen. Go keep her. Yes, she is. I know. I know. I know. You saw help me. You born some. But you're going to keep her. That's your wife. You're going to keep her. Tell you, Pastor, I don't know how much more I can take. Listen here. Just come get it, fill your tank up again. Because no car can just run forever. Right, right. You come fill your tank up, <clears throat> go back home, come back next week, fill up again. Amen. <clears throat> and if you if you go empty between now and then, we, we got it on Facebook, YouTube, everything. Just fill your cup up. Come on now. And keep on go back out at it again. Yes. Hearing God means everything. Yes. I know I was crazy. I know I was. I know I was a handful. I, I know I know for a fact. I look at some of the stuff I said and did. Now I'm telling you, man, that's, that's, that's pretty dumb. Yeah. I know that shocked you to think I could do something. Bro. But I have. <laughs> you got to weather the storm. If you, if you cannot weather the storm 
in your finances now? What makes you think you're going to weather it later? You got to learn how to go without. You talk to people that have, have some financial success. You'll see something in them that they can't have what they want when they want it. I'm telling you, I'm, I'm telling you right now, if I got to get on that road, I need something new. What do you mean something new? You know some people can't go to visit their family unless they got new clothes, new shoes, new drawers, yeah. new everything. Where you going right now? North Cadillac. Right. <laughs> Why do you need all new clothes? To impress your family. I saw this guy one time at the airport, and I knew he was going to go see his family. Child, let me tell you something. He was decked out. He had a gold, gold shoe, gold everything, big old watch. It was shades on. Well, you couldn't tell him he was he was solid money, boy. That's all he was, money. I said, look, he go, he go, he, he go somewhere back in the woods <laughs> with his with his family. Watch, watch, y'all. We don't know if they're going in the city, ain't you? <laughs> and shit, that shit in life would to you, ain't it? <laughs> If, if Square Joe, if he walk in the sun, them shoes gonna melt. <laughs> you heard me about a plastic shoe? Be out there playing if you want. You know down south, there's called a fire outside, you know. <laughs> Child, you look down, you say, oh shoot, oh shoot. This is Square Joe out there, shoot. Be like a candlestick. <laughs> Letting suits on and stuff, I look at that suit. I said that boy better hope it don't rain. <laughs> if it rain, he, he's a rat. I'm telling you, that shoe gonna shrink. <laughs> he look, he looking pretty loose right now. If it rain on, child, that's gonna be a spandex suit. I'm telling you, he, are you alright? Get some scissors. Get some scissors. Get some scissors. Just cut right out the seam. Just cut it right on off. Now we not trying to impress people. Be you. Go without. Are you trying to impress your family? Live your life. Be comfortable in what you're in right now. Right. Somebody coming now. I got my wife and I bought some furniture. You know, things didn't come. Things my favorite holiday. But while she was talking about getting furniture anyway, I got my aunt coming, so I bought some some furniture and stuff. Right. But it wasn't impressed my aunt who was getting it anyway. But I paid cash for it. Then God show up. I'm telling God always blessing me. Pay cash for it. We went there. She, she, my wife don't know how to shop. I know how to shop. So I walked through the store. I walked through the store in like two minutes. I know what I like, what I don't like. I'm ready to go. I said, I like it, but it ain't all that. I'm telling you that right now. And people in the store think they got some hot items. Right. Look at this one here. I said, is that real stone? God. We had this table look like fake stone and stuff. So she told me, so we looked in the book. We looked in the book, right? We saw this, this dining room table and the chairs. Nice. And I tell y'all, because y'all ain't gonna laugh at me. Make fun of me. So I said, how much is this one? And it always bothers me when people talk to me like I'm broke like this. Right. So she said, uh, this, this set is $2,500. And it meant a little old table. Mm -hmm. And, and it's supposed to come with four chairs, right? <clears throat> she said, this set is $2,500. I said, good, can you have it here by Thanksgiving? Mm -hmm. She said, I don't know. Ain't nobody ordered it. This is your little rinky dink stove. I, 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 I shouldn't even buy it. I should go to Ashley somewhere. You know what I'm Listen, $2,500, right? I wanted the set. I wanted the set with six chairs instead of four. So we go to get the set. We find the set from $2,500. Then we find the set for $1,800. Then I keep on this. I'm, you, know, you know, I'm trying to, trying to save my little money. We wind up getting the set for $1,100. Yes. Same exact set. I ain't no Amazon sell furniture. Yeah. Show sure do. Sure do. Then I, I got it off Amazon. I found the chairs for three hundred dollars, right? The chair was like three hundred something dollars for two chairs. They sell them in pair. Then all of a sudden, Walmart said, "Look at me." Had the same chair, two hundred and nineteen dollars a pair. No, no have mercy, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me, this ain't nothing like saving fourteen hundred dollars. So when, so when you when you hear me see me or do hear me say I'm doing something, I got something, don't think you know the whole story. Right. You look at what somebody else got, you try to do the same thing. Right. So we got that little piece of furniture, and all of a sudden, don't you go try to get no furniture because somebody coming over. Do like I did when I was first got my house. Get you some child. Right. Right. Come on here. <laughs> no, when you if you got something going on here, and you, 
you know, if you only come once a month, you can't borrow no chair. I'm going to tell you that right now. Don't even bother asking, can you borrow no church chair? You ain't coming back no time soon. Pastor, can I borrow a few chairs? Help me. No, no, we need them chairs. We need them that chair. Borrow chairs and don't come back three, four months. I borrow a chair from you? Yeah, you borrow a chair from us. You thief. <laughs> so now you can't borrow no church chair unless you've been coming every Sunday since you've been here. You understand? If you missed a Sunday, you know <laughs> you can't borrow no chair. Alright? No, you borrow, borrow somebody chair. Rent chair. Ain't nobody caring about your family and don't try to impress them. Right, right. <laughs> Stay in your lane. Don't get anxious. God will elevate you. But you're trying to impress people. You'll be trying to go ahead of God instead of with God. <laughs> Sitting up there buying a set you know you can't afford. They, they get you with that 12 months, no interest, no payments, and all that other stuff. Stop that foolishness. In 12 months, if you can't have it paid in full, leave that thing alone. <laughs> Wait on God. I declare if you want the best, you just got to pay the price. Amen. And the price may cost you something that may make you look embarrassed. But you're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. Keep driving that car. It's all right. And it, hey, listen here. And there's plenty of people that open their door to pay the toll. That's true. Open the door. Hand them the money. Wait for your receipt. That, that, that rain going to get on you or nothing. Yeah, you want to get your chain, close the door, keep on. Now, people behind you, what do you think? Everybody looking at you right. when you got something that's messed up. Right, right, right. 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 You know, men, if we ever got black and then blue socks and get them mixed up, yeah. and you, that sun hit it, you look, you say, oh. <laughs> Child, you think everybody looking at your socks. Right. 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 I said to talking to, talking to Deacon Bryant. He's sitting out there holding his pants. <laughs> you think everybody see your socks? You think everybody notice what's wrong in your life? You got to get off what people think. Open the door, pay the toll, close the door, keep on moving. Now people ain't You think the people back there say, ha ha, look at them. They win, it don't work. Nobody <laughs> care. Right. Open that door, up, hand them their say, give me my receipt. Right. Uh, give me my receipt. Come on now. Right. I ain't got no shame. Listen here. One time I was in a, um, a truck, and I, I, the truck was too big, I had to open the door. And I looked down, all this change on the ground from people that big old basket. People missing it with the chain. Yeah, y'all don't blow your horn. Too many quarters down here. I don't know if you're probably looking at me and look at that guy paying them quarters. You heard right? Child, pick them up. Change them out there. Y'all think I'm joking. I'm trying to pick up almost two dollars worth of chain. Dimes, quarters, and nickels. Everywhere. The blessings of the Lord. Free money. No, because some of y'all won't pick it up because you're embarrassed. I ain't embarrassed. Amen. Brian Brandon, if you might as well stop the horn. You might as well stop going. I'm telling you that right now. Because I'm getting every dime and nickel I see. Yes. Now, some of y'all see money and be like, I ain't stopping to get that. Right. Right. I ain't stopping to pick up no nickel. Show it to me. Show it to me, God dog. I remember one time, I was sitting at, and, uh, I was at, uh, at Amazon. And in the Amazon, in the floor, is this crack. And people change with fall and go into the crack. And they just leave it there. But I looked down in the crack. All I had to do was see one quarter. But there were three quarters in there. <laughs> Child, I pull my rings out. Pack. Oh, we get these quarters here. Boy, come on out. And I just kept throwing them up, sticking that thing up. Back up my eight ninety cent that night. See, some of y'all pass up on the increase because you're embarrassed. I ain't embarrassed. Amen, amen. I had, I had, um, I had something that happened with my Rolex or something I had, and the guy asked me, um, is it still under warranty? I told him, no, I bought it used. <laughs> I ain't got no shame. I ain't trying to act like I spent $15,000 on the watch. No, I bought that used. It don't come under warranty. It's 30 or 60 days, and I bought it about a year ago. <laughs> so can you help me? Can you fix it? What can you, I don't know what it was. I don't know what it was. I, I, I don't care about them people looking at me cock out it. Right. Oh, boy, 
What do you use? Guy saw one, guy saw one of my, 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 my uh, rims, and uh, they were the Cartier. It wasn't these, but it was a Cartier frame, right? He said, oh, man, he said, I used to work. You know, at a Cartier, a store that sold Cartier, but he named all these frames. He said, how much of them set you back? I said, $500. He said, you can't get Cartier. I said, yes, I can. <laughs> Where you get them from? You. <laughs> I ain't got nobody. Ain't nobody got nobody to I bought them used. I bought them used. I buy used Cartier frame. I buy used everything. You roll that. I don't care what people think about me. I like the watch. I ain't buy the watch that you be looking at for myself. Is it new? <laughs> you know, people come up the first thing when they see your car, you know the first thing they ask, what year is it? I tell them, pick one. <laughs> Whatever year you want it to be, pick one. Oh, listen, I don't care what you want. <laughs> is it new? New to me? New to my driveway? <laughs> but they're trying, to, they're trying to see just how far along you are than they are. Oh, that's nice. What year is that? Whatever year you want it to be. Pick one and run it. Y'all <laughs> sit up there going to go to hell lying on them cars. It's a, 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 a 17, 2, 17. What say that? 17, 17. Did you say 17? You know that's a 10, 2010? Tell the man. Don't tell him about the business. That's all. I'll live for people. Right, man, that's right. People look at my car, they ask me, man, that's a nice car. What year is it? Whatever year you want to be, pick one. <laughs> People think you're trying to be offensive. I'm not. I'm just trying to let them know. What difference does it make? Right. Really, honestly. Right. You ain't about to go buy one. Right. 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 If you want one, go get it. Man, how much that set you back? How much you want it to set you back? Because people don't want to know you got money. Right. They want to hear something ridiculous. Right. Right. Oh, man, my aunt gave it to me. Whew. I thought you were richer than me for a minute. <laughs> Hey, sometimes you shouldn't just make them sweat. All right. uh, I paid, I think I, I gave him 50000 down. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Child, you know your cousin looking at you coming out of it. And you know, you know all family think, because you got money, you ought to lend it to them. Right. <laughs> how, how, how much you pay? And then you knew you knew I was about to be evicted? I don't give a John Brown if you are evicted, not about to be evicted. <laughs> Live for you, for you to be free. Right. Don't be in prison to what your family think about you. Yes. Don't be in prison to that. Don't be in prison that people got to think you spent top dollar for something. Everybody know I buy clearance. My wife got every red bottom my wife on clearance, which means you can't take them back. So if they hurt your feet, that's too bad. You go and you have hurt foot. Cause you can't send clearance back. They tell you once you buy it, it's yours. My true religion. Y'all know what that's from? 95% of the clothes I wear, true religion. All my true religion come from off the table. The only way I'm going on the rack, they Clarence name is up there, and it's an extra 20% off. I walk in the store asking for where your clearance items are. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I don't care what people think about it. I walk right up in there and say, where your clearance table? Yes. We don't have a clearance table. <laughs> I, don't know what I'm I walk right out. I don't care what people think. Y'all be sitting up there walking, wasting your time in them stores. No, you ain't about to spend three hundred dollars on no jeans. Right, right. Well, hold this up. In the mirror. Do you have a dressing room? A dressing room. Stop that foolishness. Stop that. I go shopping. I don't. I don't look at a price tag. And that tell me whether or not I like it or not. Because when I'm going shopping for watches, I look and say, that's a nice watch. How much is it? It said $1,200. That's the ugliest watch in the whole game. Yeah. Keep on looking. <laughs> you can't get caught up in trying to please people. You're going to be poor all the days of your life. Right. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for your people that have come to this place to receive from you. I pray, God, we would live with, with liberated from living for people and making decisions to try to look with an image and have a certain persona to people that cause setback in our life. Give us what we need that we can wait on you. That your financial elevation for us will come. And God, we won't try to come to it. But we'll wait for it to come to us. God, give us what we need. That anxiety will not take over our life. 
that we won't allow what we want to captivate our minds and hearts so much that we're willing to do anything to get it. Give us what we need. Surround us with the right people that when you speak, we'll hear you and wait patiently for it to manifest. Do this, oh God. I give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.